Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV and on this episode we're going to be unboxing, setting up this Ray 5 10 watt laser by Longer. Now there's about a hundred other videos on YouTube that show this unboxing and setup process. We're just going to go through it and show you how we did it and any issues that we had along the way. As always, if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing as it helps us to keep making videos like this for you. Let's get started. All right, let's start this video off with the unboxing. And quick note, this video is sponsored by Longer. They sent out this laser engraver in exchange for video. But as always, when working with any of the vendors that we do here on the channel, I do not allow them to dictate my review or how I feel about the product. So with that said, let's get going. This uh, first part here is the screen module. That's the detail if you're trying to look up which model you have. There's the connection cables, your glasses, and you're gonna to wanna to keep these around for later on. The most important reason, of course, is just how fresh and so clean that you're gonna look once you break these bad boys out. Plus also, of course, they protect your face and your eyes from the laser. This is the USB connection cable. I believe it's a firewire on one side. I think that's what it's called. They have a few bags of miscellaneous components, including your basswood samples, a little brush to clean things off. Here is the actual laser module. They do have it packaged by itself. There's a couple legs that go onto the frame. You're gonna to wanna to set those to the side. You should have three. And here's the actual frame panels. They are all individually wrapped with plastic. So be ready to spend some time taking those all apart. The next component is the power brick. Now there's a cord that comes off of the brick itself that goes into the screen module. And then the other cord that actually goes into the wall is packaged separately. And this is a US plug for those interested. The next part that comes out is the X-axis frame assembly. Now this is already put together. I sort of thought that maybe it wouldn't be when looking at the videos online, but it actually already is assembled and you can see the ruler that shows your 400 millimeter on that side. And there's nothing left in the box, so we're just gonna throw away this piece. Now the next step that I did here was open up the instructions, give myself some time to read everything over, and then I laid all the components out from this front page to kind of tell me what I have. Longer did a great job of putting everything in individual little bags and labeling them, and anything that you need to do, you're normally gonna see that they're associated with a certain step. I don't see this very often when building or assembling things that we buy, and I thought it was kind of refreshing to see that, so there's the full layout. All right, the first big part of assembly is assembling the actual frame. So as I mentioned before, each individual piece is wrapped in this lightweight plastic, so you're gonna have to unroll them all together. It takes a couple of minutes, so make sure you have a place to work. I started by laying out the frame in the way that I thought it would assemble. I noticed that there's a stopper on one side, and then from looking at the instructions, these little holes are where you're gonna be receiving these L brackets. It's important to leave the little gap on the L bracket so that you can attach the top and the bottom because these are the sides. You're gonna insert the screws into each end and you're basically doing the process on repeat. So in the first step, I'm using the top section only. I'm not assembling the bottom until after you slide the frame on. So these little L brackets here actually slide into the frame here. You, you put it in and you slide it up and then you're able to actually tighten those on the inside with the smaller Allen wrench. And then you're using the larger Allen wrench on the outside to put the screw in. Now I needed to elevate these a little bit. So we had some old tough guys coasters that my friend Justin made for us. We used those to elevate the frame so that I could use the Allen wrench and twist it freely. That actually worked out pretty well. Now I will note an important detail is that you do not want to over tighten these. This isn't a time to be uh, macho and tighten these down as hard as you can. These machine screws will strip out. So just get them hand tight using the Allen wrench, but don't overdo it. And again, you're just repeating the same process you did on the upper left side, on the upper right hand side. And if you have something to elevate the frame, it's gonna help you to use the Allen wrenches a little bit more freely. And I'm guessing you're tightening down that inside bracket is basically just making sure that your frame stays true over time. Now, before you can assemble the front corners, you have to put on the X-axis frame. This is how it slides on. You should have two wheels on the top, one wheel on the bottom. It's gonna look the exact same as it does on the left side, as it does on the right side. And this thing should move freely. If it has some sort of friction or it's moving in a difficult way, you probably need to look how you did it and make sure you follow the instructions exactly. Once you do have the frame slid on though, you're gonna do the same thing as the top left and right on the bottom. You're gonna slide the L bracket in, leaving the little gap for the front bar to slide in like it needs to. And then you're gonna attach the larger screws on the outside with the larger Allen wrench. And the L brackets that are on the inside are gonna use the smaller Allen wrench. Same thing does not need to be super tight. You can just do it uh, you know, a reasonable amount until you feel like this thing isn't gonna move anymore and you're all good to go. 
I ran into a little bit of trouble during this spot and I actually put the L brackets on backwards the first time. So just another little tip there to make sure you're test fitting things before you just start tightening stuff down. Maybe save yourself some of the pain and suffering that I went through on this one. All right, now that the frame is assembled, the next step is to attach the screen section onto the front of the frame. There's a couple of holes that are pre-drilled into the frame of the screen, and you're gonna use the step four screw packet in order to attach it. This screen section acts as the front left side leg. So if you remember from the unboxing, you had three other legs. That's because this one actually serves as the front left corner. Again, just getting these as tight as I felt like they should be not over tightening with the allen wrench and once that's on then i'm going to move over to attaching the three legs they have a little rubber pad that's the side that goes on the bottom this helps the thing to stop skidding around wherever you're going to have it set up you can see how the two screws go in so you can kind of test fit these and they're just going to use the allen key this is the same big allen key that you're using for the frame and uh, just tighten those in you're going to repeat those steps for all of the legs this is the stopper that goes on the same side as the other stopper. It's going to stop the x-axis uh, frame as it slides forward. It's going to hit that little rubber thing on the, the bolt there and keep it from causing any damage to itself. There's the legs. Everything is assembled. The next step is to install the timing belt. Now you're going to want the little ribs on the belt facing down and use one of the Allen keys to help you kind of thread this thing through. You're going to go under the front wheel and then up and over the second silver wheel and then back down and underneath the wheel that's in the back. The only way I could do this was using the Allen wrenches to kind of help me feed it through. But do make sure that your the, the teeth on the belt are down because otherwise it will not grab onto that silver wheel in the center meaning it, it won't turn like this. And if it's not turning like this, then you don't have it installed correctly. Now, get it as tight as you can across there, laying flat. And then these are the little locking screws. You're gonna place that down in there. And then when you screw it, it's gonna twist the silver thing into the frame. That's how it should be. You don't have to make this thing super tight because you'll probably tear through the timing belt, but you do wanna make sure that that little silver thing starts to turn and it locks into the frame when you're tightening down this bolt. If it did not do that, then you need to start over and uh, make sure that it does. Now it's time to install the laser module. Uh, there are two little thumb screws. Now this is what holds it to the front. And then there's two little tiny screws with little spacers that go on the backside that just sort of stabilize the unit. Um, the laser module itself is relatively lightweight. Uh, they had it packaged by itself, but make sure that everything looks clean before you start trying to assemble it. You're gonna wanna line up those two brackets on either side so that you can put the thumb screws in. And again, that's going to tighten it from the front and allow it to raise and lower. These little screws on the back just add some stability. And in fact, I think this thing will function without them if you have any trouble. I had a lot of trouble getting these in and I was actually only able to get one of the screws in. And so I left it that way. The other screw I just never installed. And like I said, from the front side, it was fine. Now installing these cables, the cables are marked so you can know which one is which. And the little one goes into the top of the laser module and these two kind of Y out of the same cord. And the second one goes into the side of the X-axis frame assembly. And then this one goes down at the very bottom. It's got the little yellow tag on it. That's how you know it's the one that's by itself. Now, before we do the first burn with the laser, I wanted to show the setup that we ended up with. Now, I decided to do this after the fact. So we got everything assembled. I just had like a temporary setup with the saw horses. And now I actually have I built a little workbench for it, so let me show you that, and then we're gonna get get through the rest of the final setup and tweaking, and then go ahead and do the first burn. Now this base is actually recycled from the bed build that we did. It worked out pretty good for this. I just put a new piece of plywood on top. I set a couple of pieces of wood here along the perimeter. This is just scrap stuff I had so that in this corner, uh, the actual engraver can't slide off. And then we also picked up this 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter base uh, for cutting. And I will have a link in the description for this in particular one, as well as the laser, of course. Over on this side, I use some 3M Velcro to just secure power brick, and then I can run it with an extension cord over here and plug it in. And the whole thing is on wheels, so I can move it around the shop if I need to. All right, so the program we're gonna be using is Lightburn. Now, I'm not gonna go over how to use this software. There's a ton of other videos, and quite frankly, I'm still trying to learn how to use it myself. This is the USB cord, so I'm gonna try connecting it to the MacBook with the USB cord. Of course, you gotta use one of these little dongles, because why would there be a regular USB port? Then at this end, we're gonna plug it into the laser. 
And once it's plugged in, I just click scan and I'm gonna try to find it now. And it did come up. It's listed as GRBL-M3 and it does say 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter, which if you notice, that's the same size as the base we got. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name over to the Ray 5. And I do have mine set in the front left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that setting. Probably could have done a screen record, but there's just so minimal computer work. Once it's set up, this is the settings that it had for me. I renamed it and then I'm gonna click finish. And now it shows the device in my device list. All right, as a part of doing the first burn they include this tiny little micro SD card in this little uh, USB part for you and you can take it out and put it directly into this screen module and it will give you the first few projects They're already programmed in there as well as some other things like manuals now I actually downloaded a couple of logo test files but we're not gonna mess with those we're gonna do the compass right now and you just start by framing now when you hit frame it's gonna move the laser module and show you where it's gonna be like where the burns gonna be now in this case, I'm zeroed into the corner, so that's where it's gonna be, but I don't want that. So we're gonna go back. I'm gonna manually move the laser out into the middle of the work area. And then when I reframe it, it's gonna be out in the center where I kind of like it to be for doing the cuts or doing the burns rather. And now I can grab the piece of basswood. I can lay it down there underneath the laser. And then when I run the framing setting again, it's gonna show me where the laser is gonna cut directly over that piece. Here, I'll click framing and you can see what I mean. Now when you do this, you may have to make some slight adjustments because it may not be exactly where you want it to be. So feel free to do this as many times as you need. Now this piece here is your spacer, this little aluminum rod. You're gonna place it under the backside and then you're gonna lower down the laser module so that it sits on the spacer. And once you know it's there and it's good to go, you can remove it and make sure that you're totally tight before you go. Once you're ready for the burn, go ahead and press the uh, check mark and then it's gonna start going. Uh, this process is relatively slow depending on the settings you have on the laser. You can see how much time you have remaining on the front. I've obviously sped these up quite a bit, but again, this whole burn probably took about two minutes. It's not very long when I say it takes a long time. It's not like it's instant, but the bigger the burn that you're doing or the more intricate burn that you're doing, it definitely planned for the time you're gonna need in order for that to take place. Now, I was surprised by the level of detail we were able to get with this particular laser. I don't have a ton of experience with lasers, so maybe I was just super impressed for that reason, but these initial cuts are so detailed for such a small little design that I was pretty blown away. When it's finished, it's gonna give you a message on the screen. Just press okay and clear that away. Now, some of these components, I really wanna build something into the workbench so I have a place to store like these Allen wrenches, this little wrench, the little brush. These are things that I'm easily gonna lose, so I wanna have a place to store them. Just like the glasses, I love like a, a little hook here or something, so we may keep working on the workstation so that I'm not losing everything. These little adapters are what you can use if you need to plug that tiny SD card directly into your computer, say to transfer a logo file. And uh, now I'm gonna try a burn of my logo. This is just a piece of three quarter inch plywood, just a scrap piece that we had in the shop. I needed to size the logo down a little bit because it was too large for the piece. So you just do that, you hit frame, and as you can tell, this time I'm actually running it directly from Lightburn as opposed to running it from the SD card. Really no difference in functionality, except for that when you're running it through Lightburn, you have a little bit more control over what you're doing, and you can see a real-time timer of what's going on. And I personally like running it through Lightburn better than the SD card because I have more control. I probably burned a little deep into that plywood, so, I wanted to try something else and we tried a piece of MDF. And if I had the laser set a little bit uh, stronger, it probably would have burned all the way through the laminate, but it just didn't burn all the way through. Uh, I still think it was a cool experiment to kind of try. We also tried a distressed logo file, you know, distressed by it just wasn't totally clean and the laser picked up all the little tiny details. Overall, we we're super excited to keep this going and part two is coming up very soon, so stay tuned. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video about the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser engraver. As always, leave any comments down in the description and we try to answer everybody so we can help you along the way. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all those things help us to keep making content like this for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next project.